Welcome to the Dealing with Goliath podcast. This is a solo espresso episode that I call Learning versus Training Progress Accelerant. So, this thought was sparked there a couple of weeks ago when I interviewed Peter Sandine. I think uh, it went live just last week as I'm recording this. And he said a few different things, but a lot of it was about this idea of well, first of all, was the 80 20 that you can get a ton of things almost right and it won't matter as long as you don't get several key things correct equally you can get several of the key things correct and then you're all set a lot of other things can be average or or even mediocre and it won't make that much of a difference Uh, and for example for marketing he said you know it's, it's all about who the target customer is what is the offer and what is the messaging of that offer? And if you get those right, you, you know, the rest becomes relatively or comparatively simple. And he is just that. It's about simplification. But where the where the the conversation went from there, I thought was was particularly interesting. And this is where I'm sparking into it now with this, which is it, it became this idea that if you want to learn something, a great principle is to ask an expert. What are the three key principles to focus on? There's a few things in that. Now, isn't that wonderful that you're starting with this base, you're starting with focus, right? And you're then building it up from there. But often learning isn't like that. Often that's not kind of how it works because I feel there's this difference between training and learning that needs to be explored. And that's what I'm doing this little podcast episode on. So training is often very convergent to a point. And when convergent, when I say convergent, I mean that it's usually like our school systems, mostly in most of the Western world are quite convergent, that there's one right answer. It's about eliminating down through reason and logic often to get to that correct answer it's it's by elimination this sort of idea and i wouldn't by the way denigrate that for a second i think the world needs more of that at the moment as you can imagine but what i would add to it is balancing it with divergent thinking and we do a lot of this in the course and divergent thinking is you know where you're expansive where it's quantity over quality where you're much more creative and you're throwing out mad and daft Uh, possibilities for solutions or answers and then you start uh, whittling down and and, and eliminating but as I said it's the combination of the two that's very important and very powerful it's where it's one of the methods that we integrate with others that actually helps uh, many people find that uncover hidden value or, or just create it essentially out of thin air these possibilities that were never there before but I digress. So training is very much convergent it's to a point. So if you think of, well, I'm reminded when I think of training at, of I did a project management course many years ago, and it was literally I need to tick the box of each section and answer the question correct, correctly to prove that I know it. And that's just a perfect example of conversion because with an awful lot of things to be able to, you know, drive a car you you need to be able to have a certain high standard you know otherwise you're a danger to yourself and others you know maybe the same in in medicine it's one reason why checklists i might do an episode on checklists actually it's one why checklists are so important because they mean that you can't skip things there's aren't huge gaps in your knowledge or in your your approach or your actions that need to be covered That's training. It's very, as I said, convergent. Learning is a bit more divergent, isn't it? It's more expansive in many ways. Now, look, training, strictly speaking, of course, is a subcategory of learning. I'm not saying it's not, but I'm just pointing out the subtle differences between the two, and maybe maybe this will be useful to you. I've often found it useful to me. And as I was thinking about this, going for a stroll earlier, I was thinking, Geez, teachers must have a really difficult time because some teachers and some students, there's demands as the two approaches, one the giving and the other what the, the student or the parent of the student want, right? But there's that one school that says, you know, oh, um, you need to, essentially they're asking to be trained for the exam. Is this on the exam? The dreaded, most hated question of a very of divergent and uh, uh, lovers of learning hate that question, is it on the exam? But for practical purposes, it's a very fair question. If I'm here to do an exam, 
that's the, to, for me to get the points or whatever requirements I need to go on to the thing I really want to do. That's an absolutely fair question. So, you know, it's balancing those needs, as I said, with those uh, teachers who are much more about learning for the sake of learning and creating a sense of a love of learning, which is intrinsic learning, which, I mean, I would argue is far more valuable to oneself long term that you can actually, you know, intrinsic being the impetus, the motivation comes from within. So it's not, there's no carrot or stick needed. And this society of ever growing, you know, contractors and freelancers and you name it, intrinsic motivation is a huge uh, trait uh, or ability to have, isn't it? But anyway, I, I, I digress. The other thing that came to mind is I'm actually here in Berlin, in Germany, and uh, I come to Berlin quite regularly, or I did, and my German is still pretty mediocre. It's shoddy, you know. I mean, I work in English. A lot of my friends are English speakers, so even if they're German, we still end up speaking English. Um, and it's a very international city, so it's kind of if you go into a place and there's a Spanish bar person like are you meant to speak spanish are you meant to speak german are you meant to speak english like what, what do you want <laughs> what would you prefer you know shoddy spanish shoddy german or or english so anyway it's that kind of thing so it's a difficult place to to learn a, a language in in that sort of regard and i've noticed this from the people who are fluent in german around me and i've seen this in other languages as well that there was always this the eyes nearly glaze over in the memory, you know. There's always this time where where they deeply uncomfortable learning curve, where it's deeply humbling, bordering on humili- humiliation. Oh, it's too strong, but certainly a strong sense of humility where the ego takes a serious bashing when you're trying to get through this learning curve. As I said, because you have that initial uh, level where you're able to communicate the basic ideas but you're not very fluent you're not very you can't say anything you want and then the next level is understanding everything or 90 percent of stuff coming at you a whole different problem area but i said there's this painful learning curve that so many of the the people here who speak the language fluently had to get through and just grind through i'm not sure it needs to be a grind all the time but there is deep discomfort is the key point it's like poker you know when i used to play poker back in the day. Again, you're thinking, okay, I'm okay at this, but I, if I want to get better, what do I need to do? So you start doing a bit of research and you go, oh, wow, okay, there's all of this stuff I need to learn, both, you know, okay, the probability and the maths, not that difficult, but you have to learn it. But it was also then the application of all of these points and then the thousands and thousands of hands that you need to play to actually get a feel for it and build up your your new abilities, that learning curve that's so difficult. And it's also where, I was going to say a lot of people give up, but a lot of people, yeah, they give up. Others make a strategic decision like, oh, don't want to. But I also think of it in in terms of sports teams, because you often hear soccer players talk about, you know, the dreaded pre-season training. So this training that they have to do before the season starts and after they just had a, a long couple of weeks holiday. And they hate it because this is the pain. It's the grind, you know, uh, that they have to they have to just do the thing uh, to build o- up their abilities again, take those, those necessary steps and actions in order to get up to scratch, in order to be freer, to be expansive and then express themselves. So, you know, this reminded me a lot of learning. I've done a ton of courses. I'm sure many of us have these by, by this stage these days. And some courses, the, the, the rarer ones are too open. They, they make you feel uh, like you're kind of floating in the wind, that you're, you're, it's too laissez-faire, you know. They don't particularly have foundation or this groundwork. It's too loose or esoteric. But more often, it's the opposite. You know, you're, you feel like you're being drilled and trained um, too much in a narrow series of situations where you're not sure how this will be b- more broadly applicable or how it'll grow into uh, into being a nice, clear, underlying foundational principle. So it's it's great if it is that basis that you can build upon, but sometimes it's not. And what if you don't want... Uh, you know, this, this is the thing that I hate the most is these ideas. And it's always a bit of a red flag when people ask me for tips or tricks. There's, 
Oh, wow. Tips or tricks? What? No. You know, it's like, ask me the key principle. Ask me, you know, what do I do in this situation? That, that's one thing. But tips and tricks, oh, man. It's like, you know, okay, Perry Marshall put it best. You know, he's, a, he's a consultant. He's a great, I mean, consultant doesn't do him justice, but remarkable thinker in many ways. But he said, look, you can steal my copy. You know, he's a great copywriter. He said, you can steal my copy word for word. But guess what? It won't work for you. It won't work. It might work a bit, but it won't really work because it's not the context. There's not everything built up on the way to reading that copy and everything that comes after it that makes all the difference. And this is the thing about, you know, hacks, you know, life hacks, business hacks, time hacks, hack hacks, hacks. And it's the same idea of give me a trick. It's, it can be interesting when you can, you can get the hint of a principle at work if it's from an expert. That can be interesting, but I wouldn't call that a standard hack. A lot of the hacks are just these sort of little throwaway things that, as Peter Sandine said, that I referred to at the start there, one of those hundred things that can be pretty interesting and make a marginal gain, but they're not the core thing that will help you get where you want to go, that help you build actual skill or knowledge. So ideally, we want to train to principle. So those are the basics, the foundations, yeah. We want to hone those, but crucially through principle. And the principle can often be fractal. And what I mean by fractal is that, you know, when you zoom in or out, that, you know, the pattern stays the same, that the principle may change a little bit, but essentially will be the same. It'll be more dynamic, not just in one set of circumstances, but will actually be much more, much more adaptable. This stuff is key for me. Uh, I was reminded there by Stephen Kotler of, of the Flow State Genome Project. Fascinating chap. Um, and he said, there, there is no flow without creativity. And I love that. I love that, but it, as I said, it's also the starting point that you need a certain level of, of knowledge or skill set development uh, before you can be all that creative. So it's, it's the mix of the two, isn't it? It's about training up to a certain level that you have some basics to then play with, to make them your own. And it's really those sort of principles that I've tried to, uh, tried to be at the core of the Goliath negotiation method, my, my training course. I'm always trying to keep in mind that balance between training and learning, between getting the things that people really need, but doing it in a way where it doesn't feel like grunt work, it doesn't feel difficult that there's not this painful learning curve but very quickly that people are able to take a concept and so get start to wrap their heads around it and then start to learn it or apply it in a very safe situation or even just in a conversational situation and then apply it at low stakes and that's the key thing so that you have a built-up level of knowledge uh, or, or of experience with the principle and how to use it how to apply it because if you're not applying it at low stakes, it's highly unlikely you're going to apply it at high stakes. And that's where it really matters. That's where it can really benefit you, you know? Um, so th th as I said, that really is, the, is the, one of the key principles for me is, is getting people to, to move through those stages with it. But also then all of this is with a view to making it your own. And that's where you can have full flexibility, full adaptability and dynamism with some of these principles, with anything that you learn, if you're able to learn the key principle beneath it. And this is key for me. Now, as I said, all these things are a work in progress. You know, I'm always trying to improve the thing. I'm always trying to tweak it, uh, like all the trainings that I give. Um, but as I said, it's that, uh, 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 that the principle can be applicable in more than just one narrow situation. It's absolutely absolutely core so on that note uh, learning versus training uh, it can be handy to know the difference uh, as they say expansive learning can be brilliant uh, but often you need at certain points in that journey particularly when you hit uh, hit a, a tableau you need that training you need to focus in on some of that convergent before you can go divergent again so just a thought to leave you with there